I had just a little bit of trouble getting in here with that tractor. I have uh, this old stump was right in the way, and I just barely could get maneuvered in there, but I finally wiggled around and got in there. This is the uh, last log that I will have to set with the tractor. Once I get uh, the floor joists rolled over and put in their pockets and anchored down, I'll put plywood on that. And then I'll be able to set my hoist up and I'll be able to pick up every log from now on with it. And won't have to worry about getting in here with the tractor. The other three walls I'll definitely have to use the hoist on them because I can't get a maneuvered around very easily. Let's look at these notches and see how they fit. It's not bad. I think I can handle that. This log will actually become tighter on that notch because of the weight that will be added on top of this wall. And it, uh, there will be some fiber crust take place and it will just fit really, really sweet. And there won't ever be any water be able to get under that. I did make a shoulder pass, handsaw pass on this shoulder, uh, the thickness of one handsaw blade to be able to saw up through there and scoot this seal log back to the control that I have down here on the on the pier. I had to stretch it just a little bit. I had to put a chain and a strap and come along on this corner and pull it back just enough to get me enough slack for that uh, that log just to drop down on that notch. Let's look at the other notch. It's kind of in the shadows down here, but maybe we can still see it. I made my handsaw pass on the shoulder here. You can kind of see a little bit where the, the teeth uh, kind of dug into the seal log. It's good to use a saw that has hardly any set to it whatsoever. And you, you eliminate a lot of that. That's a pretty sweet fit. And as I said, that'll just continue to get tighter. Uh, with a half dovetail, they're going to stay there. They're not going to come apart. They're going to lock this thing down. Okay, I think I'll rig up maybe start turning some of these joists over and get them in their pockets. I was able to get two of these joists in by myself. So I've kind of got a system worked out I think that will work where I can just set each end in a pocket and get these all in and get them anchored in good. I drilled a hole, countersunk it on the top side of the joist and uh, I put a and a seven inch lag bolt in there, which I think is gonna hold it. I don't think it would ever go anywhere. But I'm gonna see if I can get the rest of them in. Thank you. 
I'm drilling a pilot hole on these so that I can uh, put the, the lag bolt in just a little bit easier. I've got a piece of tape here to know where to stop. I'm doing the final tighten down with a, a ratchet. I don't want to over run it with that uh, impact drill because I don't want to strip it out. I think that'll hold it. Get another one here. Okay, I've got all of the, the joister in, and I've got my lag bolts in the ends of them, and I've got some blocking around the outside edges of the wall to support the plywood on the, and I've also put a ledger on either end on B and D wall to catch the end of the sheets of plywood, and it will kind of float. I won't actually glue that, that ledger. I'll leave it to float because I'll have to pull these these logs need to, to come in just about three sixteenths of an inch on that log there to get it on the control line on the shoulder and that ledger will support the uh, the edge of the plywood and I'll still be able to slide the log in to, to pull it in on the control and the plywood will be about three eighths of an inch away from the logs and that will let any rainwater during the time of construction just flow on through and not set there and once I get the floor on the subfloor, the plywood I'll roll it with boiled linseed oil today after I get it on there and screwed down and then tomorrow I'll come back and put another coat on it and let it soak in 